Hello, I'm Dr. Winnie King, and I'm here with some experts on childhood cancer in the lobby of the Children's Hospital in Montefiore in New York City. You know, cancer is always a terrifying diagnosis, and even more so when it's a child. But there's a lot of good news when it comes to kids with cancer. Cure rates have improved dramatically. 30 years ago, a child diagnosed with cancer had only a 10% chance of survival. Today, that number is up to almost 80%. But even the best statistics don't mean much to a family with an otherwise healthy kid who finds a lump that turns out to be leukemia. This leg, I had like a big mass, so I just let it go. And then when I, when I checked it, it was still there. When I checked it again, it was still there. He said, um, Mommy, I got this little ball here near my leg. I was like, what are you talking about? Let me see it. And the doctor saw him, and then he told me, you know, this is what I think, that he has a type of cancer. I said, no, you're kidding me. That's impossible. I was thinking, like, that he's going to die. He's going to die soon. The first time, it was a cancer, but it was... It was to be cured. Any pain anywhere? Mm -mm. We started with the chemotherapy. The doctor explained to me that the first three months is very tough. That the first three months he has to be out of school because he has to be in the hospital every day. I had to think about my job. I had to think about I was going to school at that time. At that time, my parents, they were willing to do anything to help me. So they moved in. Hernan's father helps a lot. I never really spoke to him after we separate. The social worker called us and, you know, they told, okay, listen, this is not about you and you, this is about Hernan's. So you need to stick together. I was like, when I had cancer and stuff, I wanted to cry all the way. Cause I really hurt. I used to cry with him. I try not to do it in front of him because then he's gonna look me like I'm weak and I'm supposed to be very supportive. But yes, you cry. I used to hold his hand very tight and I said, close your eyes. Just, yeah, just try to look at the sky. Just try to imagine something. Don't, don't think about the needle. But he can handle a little bit more. Don't hide it. If you hide it, it hurts more, right? Uh, like they always say stay positive, stay positive, because in your mind, your mind controls everything, or, or your body, so, you mean, it will stay positive. Let's take a deep breath. And we're done. One of my friends said that, I hope I had the same thing that you have, because I don't need to go to school. I'm like, it's very hard. You get stuck by needles in the chest and everything. Do you, do you like that? And they say, no, 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 forget about it. When I go to the, like, to the hospital, I really see kids like babies getting chemotherapy and stuff, and I really don't like babies getting sick. I'm okay, because I used to turn 10, so it's all right. I'm kind of like a growing child, so it's kind of like hurt, hurts me seeing kids like that. I realized that myself, I didn't spend too much time with her nan. And now with all this suddenly happen, I feel that time is very important. That we are here and then tomorrow we don't know. I spend more time with him. This is not an eraser, her nan, it's garbage. <laughs> he's my only son. And I can't have more kids, so he's the only one. And I'm trying to make him happy every minute. Boy, what an amazing story. And Hernan, you're here with me now. How are you doing? Good. I'm very really good. But it's been a hard, hard process, hasn't it? It's been tough. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Have you had a lot of pain? But actually, I'm very strong. People say I'm very strong, so I don't really, it, it doesn't really hurt when they put something or they do something. Yeah. So, so you're a tough kid. Yes. Yeah. But you'll be glad when it's over, right? Yes. <laughs> oh, that's good. And I know it must be kind of uh, tough for you to even listen to this again, Elizabeth, and uh, hear uh, what he went through. What was the hardest part for you? Well, the hardest part for me, it's, um, you know, get everything together when I found that he has cancer. Like, organize myself in my life, my job, um, his life, of course, going to school, everything was important and we everything has to change actually yeah. 
And I would imagine it would be really difficult for you as a parent to watch your child in pain. Yes, definitely. Uh, like I said, I, I used to see him crying and I start crying too. It's very painful. Well, Dr. Richard Gorlick is the section chief of the cancer unit here at the Children's Hospital in Montefiore that treats Hernan. And uh, Richard, uh, how are the, uh, the cancers that children get different from the cancers that adults tend to get? Cancers in children are very different from adult cancers. They don't arise from environmental exposures. Most of them come because of abnormalities in development or other reasons that we don't understand. They tend to arise from different tissues. They arise from tissues like bone and muscle rather than linings. And in addition, because they arise from those sort of tissues, most of the time when kids present to a doctor, the cancer is already disseminated throughout their body. And that means the mainstay of the treatment is chemotherapy rather than things like surgery. The good news is these tumors respond much better to chemotherapy than the adult cancers do as well. Yeah, that is great news. What are, what are the more common cancers that children get? The more common cancers in kids, the most common is leukemia, which is blood cancer. That's followed by brain tumors, followed by lymphoma, which is cancer of the lymph nodes, and sometimes can be in association with leukemia as well, uh, kind of like what Hernan had. And things then from there, neuroblastoma, which is an abdominal tumor, Wilms tumor, which is a kidney tumor, and then from there, cancers of like bone, muscle, and joints. You know, just listening to, to this, you know, I would think that maybe, Elizabeth, at some point you may have thought, did I do this to my son? Did you ever have thoughts like that, that maybe Definitely. you did something that caused it? What did you think? Well, first of all, I thought that maybe something that I clean in my house, it was dangerous for him, or maybe it runs in my family. You, there's different thoughts that come to you at that point. Sure, sure, a lot of guilt. Well, Richard, are there any things that parents do that cause cancer in their children or things that they could have done differently that would have prevented the cancer? No, there's absolutely nothing that we know that comes from the environment that could lead to cancer in kids. We don't know why kids um, get cancer, but one of the most important things we do when we first meet parents is reassure them that nothing they did resulted in the cancer in their child. Yeah, and I, I know that's tremendous relief when you, when you finally hear that. And with all cancers, early diagnosis is really important. So let's talk about what kinds of symptoms parents should be looking for. Most common symptoms of things, uh, childhood cancers are things like fever, particularly if it associates with joint pain or paleness. Things like headache, particularly if it comes along with uh, vomiting or as if, if it's worse in the morning. Things like masses, which can be in the abdomen or in the lymph nodes. Things like um, unusually persistent pain in the bones, joints, or muscles. The most important thing, though, is these symptoms are very similar to symptoms of much more common illnesses. And most of these common illnesses, you know, and when you have these symptoms, it's not cancer. You have to worry just when there's unusual persistence or this association with other unusual features. Well, here's someone who knows about this from personal experience, Tony Clark and her mother, Carla, who's a nurse. And Tony, you had osteosarcoma, which is a tumor in the bone, right? Yes. How did you find out about it? Well, um, in the sixth grade, I had been complaining of pains, and I went to the nurse, and they told me to um, go home. They sent me home with a note telling me to, to ask my mother to check me for a certain type of arthritis. Then the pain went away. I didn't have pain after that. In seventh grade, I um, was playing basketball. Well, before that, I had been experiencing pain in my leg, but it was on and off, on and off. And my mother told me not to go to basketball practice, but instead I didn't listen to her. Uh -oh. And I went anyway, and we was playing basketball. A girl bumped into me, and instantly my leg got swollen, and I was just in so much pain on the floor, crying. And um, I went to the hospital, they ran some tests, and that's when everything happened. Wow, so by disobeying your mom, you actually were able to make the diagnosis. Yeah. I know Carlos is probably one of those times where you weren't too upset with her that's for doing that. But exactly. This must have just been just incredible for you and your family. It was very difficult because I used to work a lot. And um, after she was diagnosed, we spent a lot of time in the hospital. Sometimes she would be um, 
in the hospital like for two weeks at a time. I would be there 24 hours per day with her. Plus I had two other kids and I wasn't able to spend as much time with them. Yeah, you so, can only split yourself so many ways, right? That's right. Well, you know, a family can't handle this type of shock without the help from a medical team. And Kate Gowans is also a pediatric oncologist uh, with the Cleveland Clinic. And um, this, is, this is just tough stuff here, Kate. It must just absolutely terrify parents when they get this diagnosis. Um, how do you help them deal with it? Well, I think one of the most important things that we do early on is to acknowledge with the family the difficulty of what they're hearing and support them emotionally however we can, as much as we can. Um, we also reassure them very much that this is not due to anything they did, similar to what Dr. Gorlick had yeah. said. And I always uh, make it a very clear point to make sure that the families are not afraid to ask for help from other family and friends. Yeah, accepting what's going on, that's got to be a really important part and probably a very difficult part as well. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Well, you know, Carla, I know that when you guys were going through all of this, that you tried to hide a lot of your fears from Tony. What did you do? Um, I would cry, but I would not allow her to see me crying because um, I felt like I had to stay strong for her. Yeah. So um, it was really difficult, but I just didn't want her to see me crying. Yeah. Well, you want to be strong. Yes. Right. And I'm, that's a natural reaction, Katie. Mm -hmm. You know, how should parents talk to their kids about cancer, especially at the beginning? Mm -hmm. Well, people always say honesty is the best policy, and I think that this situation is no exception. Um, children and adolescents are incredibly perceptive. And if you hide things from them, that really tends to just foster fear of the unknown. I think that age-appropriate honesty, taking into account a child or an adolescent's developmental age and their level of maturity, is really the best approach. And there and are lots age, of team members to help with Well, that. and age-appropriate honesty is so important. You don't want to tell them too much. And you can help parents to Absolutely. know the right thing yeah. to say. Absolutely. Well, you know, once the diagnosis is made, then it's time for treatment. And, you know, Richard, how are children's cancers typically treated? The mainstay of the treatment of childhood cancer is chemotherapy. Um, along with that, if they have a solid tumor, um, you need to do something to control it locally, and that could be either surgery or radiation therapy, or it could be some combination of the two. Yeah. Now, you're also working on a new inhalation therapy. What's that all about? Yes. What we're trying to do is give chemotherapy as an aerosol so that most of the drug gets into the lungs where it can sort of treat cancers that spread to that site. This is sort of a newer approach, and it's not something that's sort of reached standard therapy yet, but it's certainly something that's newer and that's being tried. Well, I'm sure that that would be very attractive if we were able to pull that off so that we wouldn't have to do all the needles. That is what's so frightening. You know, that's what scares everybody is the idea of having to get a needle. And Tony, you had what was called uh, limb sparing surgery. Now, tell us what was that? Well, they put me under anesthesia, of course, and what they did was take out most of the femur, all of my knee, and part of my tibia mm -hmm. and replaced it with um, a metal prosthesis. But you're still able to walk and you still are able to move around. Can you play uh, sports? Um, no, because I can't jump or run, so I'm not be able to um, play basketball anymore. Yeah. A lot of life changes as a result of this. And Carla, I know you had to make some pretty tough decisions regarding therapy for uh, Tony after uh, the surgery. To hear about the decisions that parents face, and to find out some extraordinary information about Dr. Gorlick's background, click on Part 2 of Cancer in Children. Cure rates have improved dramatically. 30 years ago, a child diagnosed with cancer had only a 10% chance of survival. Today, that number is up to almost 80%. But even the best statistics don't mean much to a family with an otherwise healthy kid who finds a lump. It turns out to be leukemia. This leg, I had like a big mass, so I used to let it go. And then when I, when I checked it, it was still there. When I checked it again, it was still there. He said, um, Mommy, I got this little ball here near my leg. I was like, what are you talking about? Let me see it. And the doctor saw him, and then he told me, you know, this is what I think, that he has a type of cancer. I say, no, you're kidding me. That's impossible. I was thinking like that he's gonna die. He's gonna die soon. The first told me it was a cancer, but it was it was to be cured. Any pain anywhere? Mm -mm. We started with the chemotherapy. 
the doctor. Hello, I'm Dr. Winnie King, and I'm here with some experts on childhood cancer in the lobby of the Children's Hospital in Montefiore in New York City. You know, cancer is always a terrifying diagnosis, and even more so when it's a child. But there's a lot of good news when it comes to kids with cancer. Explain to me that the first three months is very tough. That the first three months he has to be out of school because he has to be in the hospital every day. I have to think about my job. I have to think about I was going to school at that time. At that time, my parents, they were willing to do anything to help me. So 